Welcome to day 8 of uh, the video. We've done a lot of stuff, we've come a long way. Last time we did the normals, and uh, now it's time to do the amy occlusion before we actually start the texturing, which is actually the home stretch. So, um, what I'm doing here is I've put the normal maps in a standard material. Pay very good at close attention because this is important. Um, I've put the normal maps in a standard material um, as a normal bump, and I've turned the color to white for this material. Um, I'm using that one as the software render style for the hardware shader on the um, on the wheels. So now what I'm doing is I'm switching my render engine over to V-Ray. V-Ray is an external plugin which you can't um, get by default with Max. You're going to have to buy that. I've set the geometry to uh, dynamic because it renders a little bit faster if I do it that way. I turn on the skylight. Turn on um, the indirect illumination. I set the presets to medium, showing the calculation phase, subdiffs to 30. Uh, I've turned the secondary bounces down to zero. As you can see, that's set to zero because uh, amy occlusion is only a primary bounce. And once I've done those settings, I'm going to add a V-Ray complete map. So what does this actually do, what I've all said here? Instead of rendering my amy occlusion uh, through mental ray, I'm going to render it as V-Ray um, indirect illumination and the advantage of that is that you can bake image occlusion that respects your normal maps it's actually going to use your normal maps as you can see that um that half dome in the center of my my rim the sort of uh dome shaped chrome part it's actually rendering that in my image occlusion um and that doesn't work if you just use mental ray so I'm doing a few tweaks, turning up the, uh, the sampling rate. Yeah. Switching the anti-aliasing filters to see what works best. And I think this is okay. So I reassign the material. Now I'm going to bake this wheel separately. And one thing I have to do is I have to offset these parts so that they don't cause any problems. Uh, the spokes are all overlaid on, t on top of each other and they will all have different amine occlusion so I've just I've only used one. Uh, since the amine occlusion on a single spoke doesn't really matter that much. Um, yeah, this is looking okay. Alright, so I'm going to copy that part out and paste the amine occlusion in here with the duplicate layer method. There we go. I've combined my two separate amine occlusion um, passes, parts, whatever. And I'm going to save that as wheel AO, as a TGA, just so I can uh, check out what it looks like. So I've picked wheel AO, turned on. And one thing I notice is, <laughs> as you can see, is that the the holes for the spokes aren't really lining up with where the actual spokes are not much you can do about that uh, I'm just gonna have to erase those in my immune occlusion checking the rear wheel and it's actually looking decent also you might have noticed that when I bake these wheels um, I hid the rest of the car because uh, I'm supposing that if you put this vehicle in game, the wheels will rotate, and then you don't want any occlusion that is specific for that exact position of the wheels um, compared to the body. So I, I want them to be have an absolute sort of normal map, not a relative one to the wheels rotated in exactly this position. So got them back here. I'm copying these back over again the small update okay I didn't need those extra layers I'm just gonna have to manually fix those uh, those problems here just like I did with the with the uh, normal maps where I went in and manually painted over some parts I'm gonna have to do it here as well but now I'm just checking out what they look like and they yeah I think it's okay to compare uh, together with the normals and the even occlusion they look uh, look acceptable save for the mistakes I have to correct 
Yeah, and coloring them black, that's not really the best idea. This is just trying to get a feel of what they're doing for me. Um, but these reflections and speculars are all a little bit too strong. Anyway, um, fixing those wheels, that's going to be for when I do the, uh, the diffuse textures on the wheels, which is the next video part, so you'll see about that. This is just purely about the baking. So, um, I'm unhiding all my uh, extra stuff and I'm attaching them as one single object because I want to bake them as one single object. I don't want to bake every uh, part of this one separately. Uh, it's going to take way too much time and this is just uh, the faster method of doing it. Also a remark is that uh, you could also use projection mapping to bake the ambient occlusion from the high poly to the low poly. Uh, I'm not doing that because that would require me to do the exploding of a mesh anyway and as I explained in the baking video I'm not doing that and I personally believe that uh, the extra effort you put into exploding for a projection mapping ambient occlusion is not worth uh, the small advantage in visual quality even, even it might not even be noticeable once you've fully textured it with specular maps and everything I don't think it's worth my time and effort so I'm not doing it I'm offsetting duplicate parts just so so I can avoid problems. Sometimes, for example, for those lights, it's going to be a little bit tricky because um, uh, I'm using them at the back and at the front, and they actually will have different ambient occlusion, but they'll be. Uh, they'll use the same texture space. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of tweaking there, rotate, whatever, I'll see. We'll get to that problem later. So not, right now I'm selecting all the parts that I know are um, duplicates. And for normals it matters less if they're overlaid on top of each other, but for aim and occlusion it actually matters what their position is towards other objects. If it's symmetrical, then it won't be a problem. But if they actually have a different position, like those four bolts at the front, then you're going to have to do this offsetting. to select all these parts too and I'm offsetting all of them and then I'm offsetting one of them back to its original position Yeah, the rest of that won't give me so much problems. I'm just trying to make sure, trying to avoid problems, which I know I will get from, from experience with doing this. Um, also, I for the body, the wheels and the um, the carriage and everything, uh, the carriage body will, will be in the same position all the time, so I'm unhiding those. For the wheels, they actually move, so for that I have to hide all the, the other parts, but um, there will always be wheels and there will always be... Um, place for the passengers to sit attached to the chassis and engine so that's why I can uh, unhide those okay so I'm turning up the padding again I'm adding a V-Ray complete map uh, a little remark about the V-Ray complete map if you don't use a V-Ray map type Max will crash <laughs> so don't use a regular complete map don't use normal map don't use anything else than V-Ray map types so I'm saving this because I know it could crash and I paused the render, there we go, that's my aiming occlusion, I'm just checking out. We've got a small problem there, see that's when I forget to offset things, um, then I get that. And um, let's see if there's anything else. Looking for these crazy uh, polygon type of patterns, I see something else there at the left. I'm just going to assign it so I can see where, where things went wrong. Ah, uh, yeah, the belt. Yeah, yeah, and obviously that part on the side. All things I will have to fix. They're not impossible to fix, but you have to have to pay attention to them. 
most of it is looking pretty good actually uh, from the start you know one advantage is of, of baking um, like this the the ambient occlusion is that if you bake from um, from your high poly then it has to be exploded because if you have intersecting parts the silhouette of the intersecting part for example a circle will be perfectly round in your high poly but it will have a segmented um, intersection in your low poly so that way your intersections the really dark parts they won't um, won't always match uh, so that means that you actually have to do two AO bakes you have to do one of the exploded high poly and then one of the combined low poly without any normal maps I just prefer to um, combine these into one single pass to save myself time um, I hope you I hope you understand what I mean here it's just that uh, if you bake like you project your um, your normals with your extra detail into your low poly you you get better quality you get more contrast into your uh, into your AO but it's just way more effort to do that because to explode for people that really don't know what exploding is is you select every single part and move it outward so there are no more parts intersecting but you have to do it for every single low poly part and you have to do it for every single high poly part and their positions have to match exactly and uh, I know there are some scripts to help you with that but up until now I haven't really found one that does exactly what I want you, you, it still just takes a lot of effort to get right okay so I'm trying to fix these overlapping areas most of them aren't so hard to just move them detach whatever And obviously for this offsetting, um, I'm using the UV tools again. Can't do anything without those. Okay, so I'm trying to get the, the outer part of the belt into the correct position. And I want to get the, uh, the inner part um, offset so it just uh, doesn't use those special UVs. Offset those. All right. So for that part, I'm gonna have to see what I'll do for. Probably won't even work offsetting. This one's giving me some trouble. Sometimes I have to mirror parts, um, and sometimes I have to move them. It's just you need to think about what is exactly baking what and what is the effect and how can I fix this by mirroring, moving, offsetting, whatever. Requires a bit of thinking and, and some attention. See for this part for example if I would uh, flip the UVs around, make that black part on the inside, then uh, put that black part on the inside, I'm sorry, then that wouldn't uh, that wouldn't c cause the this problem anymore. So I'm detaching those and then mirroring them, and there you go, you see, the black part disappeared to the inside. I'm just trying to check everything, seeing if it causes problems, if I can fix it. Because small normal baking errors, you might not notice them so much, but these amy occlusion errors, they just turn everything to pure black. There we go, another bake. Uh, the bake does take a while for the image occlusion. I think it's pretty slow with V-Ray, but then again, uh, I just get, I don't know, a biscuit or some lemonade <laughs> while it's baking. Okay, so now it looks like everything is okay. We fix that problem there. Mm, collapse the... Yeah, I'm rotating this part so the, those black areas go towards the back. And I don't see much 
with problems anymore. Um, I've offset that one and I'm going to rotate it slightly because I don't think the image occlusion is matching. It's, it might be a bit hard to see on this uh, video, but I think it needs to be rotated slightly. Also, I have not fixed this one yet. I hit Control D and then I hit Mirror, so it just rotates just that part around. Um, oh yeah, and obviously here something went wrong. So I just detached that as a clone, select it again, mirror it to the other side, and then uh, reattach that part. And oh, I can see something strange here. You see that the hub where the um, the wheel attaches? Freaky stuff going on there. See, it's it's got a second one in there, which apparently has like oh god, what is this? <laughs> I don't know how this happened. Probably just I copied it, forgot to unwrap it. Um, God knows. Let's see if it's if it's on the other side also. Yeah, there it is. It's there too. I might not might not have seen that too well. Whatever. I can still delete it later. It's not that much effort. Okay, so that's all the aiming inclusion I've baked so far. And um, right now we're gonna go over to the texturing.